So a couple days ago, the CEO of Spotify, Daniel Ek, made some comments that has made the internet kind of freak out a little bit. <laughs> Basically, people have been complaining that Spotify is responsible for like the death of the music industry and making it impossible to make a living as a musician. And he said things like, you can't expect to put out an album every three to four years and be successful like you could in the past. And he also said things like, it's not about just like putting out music and having that be it. You have to put out content regularly. You have to engage with your fans and you have to tell a story around your release. And uh, this, there's a couple articles that I'm gonna link to in the description so you can read them at your own will. Um, but it goes through all these things he said word for word. I'm not gonna read it to you verbatim. But then there's also these tweets of people complaining. You know, I don't, I don't know who these people are. I'm assuming they're celebrities because they're verified, but um, you know, go after yourself. <laughs> Music must be turned out regularly because it's a product. You are an obnoxious, greedy little Daniel Eck. Um, you know, <laughs> F this guy. <laughs> When this guy puts out an album himself, I will listen to him tell me about my albums. He has no idea what he's talking about. He's never created any music in his life. Millionaire Daniel Ek telling how... It just, it just goes on, right? And this is just kind of Twitter being Twitter, right? People do this on Twitter. They complain and they, they like to just yell and they just, you know, play the blame game and point, point fingers at whoever they think is at fault. But he's right. Daniel Ek is right that this is how the music industry is now. You can't put out a release every three to four years and expect to make money. You have to churn out music. What I say is every four to six weeks, release a single, and every year, release an album. Like, that's a lot of music, but that's what I recommend, and that's what all these successful artists are doing nowadays, essentially, unless they're already established, and then they can do whatever the hell they want because they're, they're already a name in the industry. Um, and I, what I also tell people is that they should build a story around their release, and they should engage with their fans and post content on social media regularly. So... Where is the outrage from this? It sounds like to me, all of these people complaining are the people from the, that benefited from the previous music industry and are having trouble in the modern day music industry. And maybe that's why I don't know who any of them are, not making any statements about them because I do understand their outrage. Um, but you know, anyways, I wanna dive into this a little bit more. So I wanna show you some, some financial numbers that might sound boring, but you know, before you go to the comments and disagree with me and say mean things, I wanna show you the numbers that kind of justify why Spotify can't just pay people more. Because that's what a lot of people say. Spotify pays you know, uh, four tenths of a cent, less than, heck, less than half a penny per stream. You need to raise that, it's too low. It's just insane. Okay. This is an article from Love Money. I'm not gonna go through their like financial statements, but you could if you wanted to. Basically, in 2017 or so, or 2016, they had 286 million monthly users, 130 million paying subscribers, and they were still losing money every single year, <laughs> right? It's insane. And once they hit about the decade mark, they finally started making a profit. And the craziest thing about this is that every dollar they made, they were paying almost 80 cents, 79 cents to musicians, which is actually better than Netflix's, which would pay 66 cents to the author of the content. So they're already paying artists 80% of what they make in. It's, yeah, 80% of what they make in. So they can't raise that cost. Otherwise, they'll just go out of business, right? If they raise the cost... Uh, to paying artists, they'll have to raise their prices. If they raise their prices, they're going to be the most expensive streaming service in town, meaning that everyone will ditch them and go to Apple Music or Deezer or whoever. And it's not like all of them are going to raise their prices at the same time, most likely. There's always going to be some companies that say, we're going to be the cheap company and we're going to you know, make things as low as they could be. And Spotify is not even the cheapest paying company. Actually, it seems like YouTube Music is actually the cheapest paying company. And in fact, I was actually wrong. So this is this is an article by Soundcharts. Um, I'll link it below. I don't see the actual date here, but this is the payouts for all these different streaming services. Amazon apparently pays uh, pays the most, which I don't I don't know if that's actually accurate. So like for example, I usually say Spotify pays between four tenths and seven tenths of a cent. So this is actually a little lower than expected, but in general, this should be roughly right. Like Rhapsody and Napster one of the highest titles one of the highest youtube red is apparently one of the highest but that's not like the same as youtube official content or youtube content id which is all the way down here and then you also have pandora all the way down here 
Spotify is right here, which is pretty much the same as Amazon Prime, which is pretty much the same as Deezer and Apple Music. Like, Apple Music does pay a little bit more, but, like, all of these, you're dealing in tenths of a cent per stream. So, in reality, this I know this number's higher, and I know this number's a little bit higher, but still, you kind of get the picture that none of these streaming services are really paying anything substantial, and they can't really just raise their cost because they'll just go out of business, right? And we can take another look at this this 80% payout, right? So at, at currently, at least as of 2017, they were paying 75% of its total revenue to this number called cost of revenue, which is basically paying out royalties and distribution costs, the money we get as artists, essentially. And then in the past, it was as high as 81%. So they can't raise the prices and they can't, they can't just pay out more to artists because they'll just go out of business and then another person's just gonna come in and take the take the game. So instead of going out and complaining and saying, this is wrong, this is this can't be how it should be, and blaming like the, the rich people on top, you really just gotta embrace it and figure out how you can make it work. And Daniel was nice enough to even just straight up spell out how you do it. You need to tell a story around your release. You need to release regular music. You need to engage with your fans and produce regular social media content behind your releases. And you don't have to just rely on streaming. You can still sell digital versions of your songs. You can still sell physical products, but the industry is moving towards streaming. And I don't think that's a bad thing. In my case, Spotify pays me the most out of every single thing for my distribution service. I use DistroKit. Um, they pay, Spotify is the biggest percentage of that by far. Now, I do predominantly promote my music on Spotify, but they promote it with their algorithms, and they bring in way more fans than I could ever really possibly generate myself, and it's just a lot easier to ask, right? If I want someone to check out music, I just say, look me up on Spotify. I don't have to say, well, give me $8 and here's my album. I don't have to say, go to my website and download this file. It's just like, go check it out on Spotify, go check it out on Apple Music. So instead of complaining about all these things, embrace all the positives of streaming and Spotify, I guess and take advantage of it.